art school 006 I go that way and that way <laughs> art school 6 working with colors <clears throat> the color wheel yellow yellow orange orange red orange red red purple 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 blue 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 green green yellow green the wheel is a circle of color that represents for us in a in a way the physical spectrum of light as we uh, that we see as color although I think we can maybe even sort of subconsciously see purple ultraviolet and infrared red you know that that's part part of uh, some of the undescribable beauty of something certain white flowers you might actually be seeing some of the ultraviolet actually um, sort of subconsciously there may even be pigments that uh, one can use to give off such color of course we must of course to make certain we must use instrumentation the colors are enriching in themselves and tend to tell us of the universe and even possible sorts of things uh, we cannot yet understand as mere humans however <clears throat> Aesthetics can even get us beyond the limitation of our own understanding. Color can, however, have deep meaning, especially when observed on the markings of animals and in aspects of plant life around us. <coughs> the colors of the lithosphere can be particularly revealing. Hence the awe and fascination over gemstones and the intense desire for individuals to own them. In art we have simplified the basic grasp of color in said color wheel to use as a tool to produce more exquisite artwork. You may find that you develop a distinctly personal command of the use of color as you progress, but the wheel is there for those who might find themselves inhibited by a weakness in the comprehension of its use. Color of pigments does different things when mixed than pure light does, you know. In the world of pigments, as in chemi the chemicals that give paint its color, <coughs> we are dealing with color that happens when white light is reflected off the painted surface. This as opposed to, for instance, um, a stagehand using color spotlights or the RGB monitor, you know, with its uh, dots of uh, phosphorescent colors, you know. RGB monitor has these colors uh, that um, are hit by an electron microscope. Those are, that's the old electron tube and stuff like that. Uh, 2B or not 2B, 3B and uh, 3D and so on. Okay, so... But in the world of paint, when colors are mixed, you would want to know what you'll get, especially as you mature in your work. Um, you will um, know the nuances of the paints. The slight reddish tinge of cobalt blue or the green afterglow suggested in, in the thalo blue. Um, when using the colors, a lot depends on your developing your power of decision. You will find yourself more and more being able to decide quickly how you are going to emulate the color you perceive or the one you want to set down. When uh, the color list uh, above is set on a wheel or a circle, you can then study what color is the opposite of another. 
so that when mixed they begin to cancel each other out into grays and browns which can be used to great advantage in the composition of a skilled artist. The collection of colors named above are then delegated into three groups primary, secondary, and tertiary. The rest of the colors can be made uh, with the three primary colors although it's important to know that the chemistry of the pigment or the finely ground powdered colors put into paint to give it its color will affect slightly the secondary or tertiary, tertiary colors you try to make. Cadmium red and ultramarine blue, the kind made with aluminum, not lapis, uh, make a different sort of purple than you'll get from alizarin crimson and Prussian blue. Junk car, junk, junk car. Rave on! No, loon. Loon on. It's lunatic. Okay, also remember that color, a color, is not a color. Oh, that tickers. Hang up. All right. Also remember that a color is not a color unless it is next to another color. One method uh, to study color is to juxtapos juxtapose bits of colored paper, you know, though I say you're far better off observing color juxtapositions. What happens when certain colors appear in proximity to others? You're also going to find that reality, especially natural surroundings, are going to serve you a lot of grays, mauves, sort of purpley grayish colors, browns and brownish versions of so-called purer colors, rendering them, as the expression goes, into more earthy colors. Some come straight from the tube, such as yellow okra, rust red, and so on. So then, for openers, we have on our color wheel the primary colors. Um, yellow, red, and blue, the secondary colors, what you would ideally get when mixing two primary colors, orange, purple, and green, and then more subtle changes in color betwixt all that, the tertiary colors, yellow, orange, red, orange, reddish, purple, bluish, purple, the beautiful blue, green, the lively, uh, yellow, green. Of course, not to scare you, but there are there is the quaternary set of colors and the quintic set. But I never studied those. You know, you, you, you may find that as you work with the main bunch, the rest comes automatically and the mind begins to sort things out, even without you muddling around too much with your con conscious thought you will find that you'll need much more white paint than anything else because most of the color we see in standard sorts of illumination occurs in the form of mere tints of the colors and of course with the tints come the shadows or the shades with the command of light and shade you will come to the point of being able to produce a picture or more precisely a work of art. Also remember the brush stroke plays an important part as among other things it determines the surface texture of the painting. When toning things down use equal values.